Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 48. In this video, we're going to learn about converting between metric units. So again, the lesson objective for today would be to learn how to convert between metric units. And for most of you watching this video, you're going to live in the United States like I do. We don't really deal with the metric system that often, but it is important for us to get a general understanding of the metric system and how to convert between the units because at minimum, it's going to come up on one of your tests in the future. All right, so let's start out by looking at the commonly used metric units. So we have three that we're gonna cover today. We have the gram, that's for weight. We have the liter, that's for volume. And we have the meter, that's for length. Now one of these I know that all of you have seen. The liter is used when you buy a two liter of Coke or Sprite or Pepsi or whatever soda you'd like to consume. Now one thing that's different about the metric system when we have values that are larger or smaller than the basic unit, we use a prefix. So when we talk about prefix, that's a word that's going to come before the basic unit, right? So we put a word before we say gram. And here are our prefixes. So the first few we're going to look at represent larger values than the basic unit. So we have kilo, which stands for a thousand. We have hecto, that stands for a hundred. We have deca, that stands for ten. Now, when we start talking about values that are smaller than the basic unit, we have deci, that stands for 0.1 or 1 tenth, 1 tenth. We have centi, which stands for 0 0.01 or 1 hundredth. And we have milli, which stands for 0 0.001 or 1 thousandth. Now, let's see an example real quick of how we could kind of use this prefix. If we know that kilo stands for 1,000, if I had 1,000 meters, instead of writing 1,000 meters, I could just say I have a kilo meter. So we could say that 1,000 1, meters is equal to, or is the same as one kilo meter. And that's all you're doing, you're just taking this prefix and putting it before the basic unit meter. If you had 100 meters, if you had 100 meters, you could say that you had a hectometer. So you had one hecto. I'm just putting that word hecto before I put meter. And let's skip a few. We'll come down here to, let's say, milli. So if I had one thousandth of a liter, let's say, I could say I have a milliliter. So one thousandth of a liter, or in decimal form, you could put 0 0.001 of a liter, is going to be equal to one milliliter. So I'm going to write M-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I, and then follow that with liter. So the prefix is not too difficult to understand. You just take that part and put it before your basic unit. All right, so let's look at a basic conversion. So we want to convert five kilograms to grams. Now I'm going to kind of show you the slow way to do this. And then I'm going to kind of show you the trick, which makes metric conversion an absolute joke, right? Once you see this trick, you're going to be like, wow, this is easy. So to go from five kilograms to grams, let's use our knowledge of what we did in the previous section when we converted between US units of measurement. Let's identify the relationship between kilograms and grams. I know that kilo stands for a thousand. So what this is saying is that I have a relationship that is one kilogram, one kilogram is equal to 1,000, 1,000 grams. So if that's the relationship, and I'm trying to go from five kilograms to grams, remember we write a unit fraction with the units that we want to end up with in the numerator. So I want to end up with grams, so I'd put 1,000 grams in the numerator, 1,000 grams, and I'd put one kilogram in the denominator. And I just multiply by what I'm trying to convert. So I have five kilograms here, five kilograms. And the units I no longer want are going to cancel, kilograms and kilogram. And basically all I need to do is multiply five times 1,000, and then my units will be grams. So five times 1,000 is, of course, 5,000. 5,000 and then grams. 
So that's pretty easy to do. Again, when I show you the simplified method, it's going to be even easier. But one thing you can kind of look at and rationalize here, if, if each kilogram is 1,000 grams and I have five of those, well, yeah, then of course I have five times 1,000, right? 5,000 grams. So an easier method is to look at a prefix chart. So a prefix chart is a chart that has everything in order based on the number 10. And let me explain that. So we started out at the unit. If I start out at the unit and I just put the number one, as I go to the right, I'm looking at smaller values, and so I'm dividing by 10. So to go from the unit to deci, I take one and I divide by 10, and I end up at 1 tenth, or you could write 0.1. Then to go to the right one more time, to go from deci to centi, I divide by 10 again. If you think about 1 tenth divided by 10 or 1 tenth times 1 tenth, that's going to give you 1 over 100, right? Or again, in decimal form, 0 0.01. And then if I go to the right one more time and end up at milli, I would divide by 10 again or multiply by 1 tenth, and I'd end up with 1 thousandth. Or again, I could put 0 0.001. Now, as I go to the left, notice I'm just multiplying by 10. So this times 10 will give me this, this times 10 will give me this, this times 10 will give me this. And once I start going to the left over here and working with whole numbers, it's really simple. One times 10 is 10, so deca, remember that means 10. Multiply by 10 again to get to hecto, remember hecto means 100. Multiply by 10 one more time to get to kilo, remember kilo means 1,000. So now we can see that this is based on the number 10, right? If I'm moving to the right, I'm dividing by 10. If I'm moving to the left, I am multiplying by 10. And that should be familiar to you from working with place value, right? If I come out and put, okay, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, as you go to the left, you're multiplying by 10. As you go to the right, you're dividing by 10. Same thing here. Now, when we encounter a problem, like let's say what we just worked with here, convert five kilograms to grams, you're gonna look at your prefix chart, and you're going to identify the starting prefix. So in this case, if we're going from 5 kilograms to grams, I'm starting out right here at kilo. And I want to end up at grams, which is the unit, right? The basic unit. So what I want to do is match the movement and the direction on the prefix chart with my decimal point in what I'm trying to convert. So for example, if I'm going from kilo to the basic unit, right, for grams, I'm gonna go one, two, three places to the right. So with five kilograms, I'm gonna put five, I'm gonna put my decimal point, and then I'm gonna go one, I'm gonna put a zero in, two, I'm gonna put another zero in, three places to the right, and put a final zero in there, and I can put a decimal point at the end or I can leave it off. The number is 5,000. And then I would just write my new units that I'm going to, right? Which would be grams in this case. So no complicated unit fraction involved, no multiplication involved. I'm simply looking at a prefix chart and matching the movement and the direction with my decimal point for what I'm trying to convert. It's that simple when you work with the metric system. The only thing you might struggle with is memorizing this part right here. And a lot of students will remember king for kilo, Henry for hecto, died for deca, unexpectedly for unit, drinking for deci, chocolate for centi, and milk for milli. So king, Henry died unexpectedly, drinking chocolate milk. So hopefully you can remember that. If not, again, if you just kind of write out the prefix chart a few times while you're doing some examples, you will memorize it. Okay, for the next one, we want to convert four millimeters to decameters. Now, all I need to do is write this number four down, write the number four down, and I'm going from millimeters, from millimeters, so this is where milli is, that's your prefix, to decameters, so deca, deca is right here. Now, I'm going to match the movement and the direction on the prefix chart with my decimal point. So I'm starting here at milli, and I'm going one, two, three, four places to the left. So I just need to match that over here. Let me just kind of back this up. So let me put three zeros to the left of this four. So one, two, three zeros. My decimal point for the number four starts here. And then again, I'm just gonna move it four places to the left. So one, 
two, three, four places to the left, so it would go right there. And then once you're done with that, just write in your new unit. So we're converting to decameters. So that's what I'm going to write. Deca, deca meters. So four millimeters is going to be equal to 0 0.0004 decameters. Okay, let's take a look at another one. We have 3.8 kilometers and we want to convert that to millimeters. So look at your prefixes. Again, you're starting out with kilo and you're going to milli. So here's kilo, here's milli. So you're going all the way across the map. So let's write that number 3.8. And we're going to move our decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six places to the right. So that means I'm going to need to place five zeros behind the eight. One, two, three, four, five. So this is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six places to the right. And let's just erase all that, put some commas in, and we'll get 3,800,000. And then we convert it to millimeters. So we'll put millimeters behind that. All right, let's take a look at another one. We want to convert three milligrams to hectograms. So again, look at your prefixes. You have milli here, you have hecto here. So here's milli, here's hecto. So let me go ahead and write this number here. We have three, and we're gonna be going to the left. Let me kind of write that a little further over here so that I have some room. And we're just gonna match the movement and the direction on our prefix chart. That's all we need to do. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five places to the left. So I would need to go and add in four zeros here to the left of the three. One, two, three, four. So I can move this one, two, three, four, five places to the left. And I'll end up with 0 0.00003 and then hectograms. So hectograms. All right, for the final problem we're going to look at, we have 5.42 centiliters to decaliters. So you look at your prefixes, you have centi and you have deca. So here's centi and here's deca. So let's write down our number, it's 5.42. And I'm starting at centi and I'm going to deca. So I'm going one, two, three places to the left. Let me kind of move this over to the right a little bit. And I'm going to put in two zeros to the left of the five. And so this is going to go one, two, three places to the left. And I'm going to end up with 0 0.00542 and then decaliters. Decaliters.